Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning and praise the Lord. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for our bishop and our mom in absentia for giving me a chance this day just to bring the word of the Lord, the word that is sharper than a two-edged sword, the word that speaks into our lives and circumstances change. And I want to bless God also for this opportunity. And I want to thank all of you for being able to come to church today. That even though it was raining, you still came to church this morning. You would have said it's cold and therefore you're going to be inside your blankets. But imagine you came. And so I want to really bless God for you. And to take a brief moment because our time is fast spent. And even welcome, uh, welcoming all those who are watching us online. Karibuni sana. Thanks for tuning in. We want to look at uh, Luke chapter 5, which is our key scripture this year. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 5. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 5. This is what the Bible says. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Tell your neighbor, launch out into the deep. <laughs> So he told Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Again, tell your neighbor, at your word, I will let down the net. You can tell the other neighbor, at your word, I will let down the net. <clears throat> this portion of scripture, which is our theme scripture in deliverance ministry this year, even as we rush towards getting the great catch, um, is a portion of scripture that was written of men who had gone out fishing. And the Bible calls them fishermen. Many times we call Kina Peter and John fishermen because that was their trade. That was their prof profession. It's just like meeting a team of doctors. You'd call them doctors. You'll call some engineers. You'll call other teachers as per their profession. So these were fishermen. And the Bible says that they had gone out fishing. And they had toiled the entire night, but they had caught nothing. Then the portion that we are reading here, the Bible says that Jesus appears in the scene and crowds are pressing in towards him, not so that he can give them anything really, but because they wanted to hear the word of the Lord. When you read verse, uh, verse one, it says they were pressing on him because they were so, so thirsty for the word of God. They were so hungry for the word of God. And that's the reason they woke up in the morning and when they heard that Jesus was by the shores of the lake Gennesaret and the lake Gennesaret is the same lake that is also called Galilee and so they are pressing in on him and they want to hear the word of God and Jesus looks at them and during those days they didn't have a microphone like we have today they did not have a microphone and so Jesus looks at them and realizes this crowd is so big for him to communicate effectively he looks around and finds two boats and these boats had been left aside there by the fishermen who had been toiling the whole night. And these fishermen, the Bible says that they were washing their nets. Why were they washing their nets? They were washing their nets because all through the night they had been trying to cast the nets into the waters. And the nets now were dirty because they were not able to catch fish, fish but they were able to catch maybe frogs. Maybe the dirt, maybe the weeds, and maybe all those other creatures that are found 
in the, in the lake or in the water bodies. And so it was not anything of importance really that they could have taken home and been happy about. So they have all set aside their boats and they are washing their nets. And I can imagine as they were washing their nets, they must have given up in their hearts. They must have said, uh, we have toiled the whole night. It's been a hard work. They have toiled the whole night. And so let us wash these nets and go home. After all, there is nothing that is keeping us in this place. Just like some of us normally leave our homes day in, day out. You have been toiling for several years in this particular employment. You have been toiling for several years in this particular marriage trying to make it work. You have been toiling for, for many, many weeks or many, many months in your business. But when you are looking back, there is nothing of importance to show of it. There is literally nothing. You look back and you're wondering, for what do I normally wake up in the morning? For what do I normally rush and work late at night? Yet I am catching nothing. Then Jesus has appeared into the scene. And Jesus is in usual business of preaching. And uh, as he looks at the two boats, he decided to choose one of the boats. And he gets into that boat and he pushes it. He tells Simon, push it towards the water. And Simon pushes it towards the water so that Jesus can sit there, gain a good view of the crowd that is listening to him and be able to speak to the crowd that is listening to him. And I was wondering, why didn't he just go and climb on top of a rock somewhere? Where did, why did he need a boat to be able to speak to these people. It's because when the boat was thrown or rather pushed a little bit into the water, water is able to magnify sound scientifically. So he knew this crowd was very big and because he did not have a microphone, he needed an amplifier of sorts. And so as he pushes the boat into the water, the water is able now to magnify the sound so that everybody who is around is able to hear the good news. And he preaches. He preaches. And you know, while he is preaching, now because the boat belongs to Peter, and it has, it's Peter who has been told, push it towards the lake. Peter was forced to stay there and hear Jesus preach. And maybe that's the reason why Jesus decided, I will use this man's boat because I have an interest in his life. And I know when I'm using his boat, he will definitely stay on until the message is complete. Born as if he will. So when we get to verse 4, the Bible says that uh, Jesus is telling them to launch when Jesus had stopped speaking, the Bible says, Jesus said to Simon, now launch into the deep. Realize that by this time he is being told, launch into the deep. Jesus is still within the boat. Hallelujah. He has not stepped out of the boat. But he is telling Simon Peter, launch into the deep. Launch into the deep waters. And Peter comes and tells him as if to inform him, as if he's not the Messiah. G Peter comes and tells, um, tells Jesus, Master, we have toiled all night long. Remember there's a song we sang here during the ladies' conference. Buana mkubwa, tumefanya kazi ya kuchosha, usiku kucha, na hata tusipate kitu. We have toiled the whole night. I happen to come from the lake region. Fish is never caught during the day. They normally go to the waters in the night. You will not find a fisherman on duty during the day unless they are selling what they caught during the night. Because fish can only be caught during the night. Buona sifiwe. But now the master is coming, the king of kings, the creator of all creatures. And he is telling these people during broad daylight, cast your nets into the deep. One as if you Cast your nets into the deep. There are times when Jesus will come if you allow him into your life. And yes, you have toiled trying to make that marriage work. 
My sister, you have toiled trying to make that work, that business flourish. And you're telling the Lord Jesus Christ, Buanam Kubwa, I have toiled the whole night, but I have caught nothing. I have worked hard on disciplining my children, but I have caught nothing. They are till, still haywire. I have tried being the best wife that I know how to be, but I have caught nothing. I have worked hard. I've even gone back to school so that I can receive that promotion, but I have caught nothing. Why hadn't they caught anything? Because they were depending on their experience as fishermen. Their natural experience as fishermen. They had been trained. That was their trade. They had been trained as fishermen. They knew how to fish. And so they were using their natural experiences that they had acquired. In this year of the great catch, we will need to put most of our experiences down. They are very, very important. Yes, your credentials will be very, very important. But you will need to launch into the deep. To have a great catch. You will need to go deeper. To have a great catch. Those of us who have ever gone uh, to Mombasa. And they love swimming. In the salty water. You realize that if you choose to, sh to swim. Around the shores. Or the beaches. Then what happens? What happens when you are swimming around the beaches? You become dirty. Because the beach only has leaves, only has some uh, sand. There's not much at the beach, especially for those of us who do not know how to swim. You always want to stay at the, at the shore. And what happens is that as the waves are coming, they hit you with the dirt instead. So you end up more dirty than that person who has gone into the water. The person who has gone right into the water is enjoying themselves more than you who is at the show. In this year, we will leave the show. The Lord is telling us in this year, we have to vacate the shallow waters. Hallelujah. We have to move from the shallow waters of our spiritual lives so that we can get into the depths of the places and be able to get the fish that the Lord is commanding us to get. Because big fish can never be caught at the shores of any water body. Buona si fiwe. Being in the shores, what do I mean? Being in the shallow waters, what do I mean? It means being comfortable with status quo. You come on Sunday, you come on Wednesday, but you do not have an altar that you have raised in your house. You don't have an altar of prayer. You are depending on eating on Sunday. You are depending on eating on Wednesday. And there is nothing else that you are cooking for yourself in your house in terms of spiritual nourishment. You will not be able to get the great catch. One has a few. It is time for us to launch deeper. It is time if you want the great catch. And when I'm talking about the great catch, I mean in terms of souls. I mean in terms of your promotion in your career. I mean in terms of your marriage working. I mean in terms of your children being able to be aligned to the purposes of God. You can never attain that at the shores of any spiritual life. One else was a few God is saying, launch into the depths of the waters. Launch into the depths of the waters. It's when you will launch in prayer. You will launch in reading of the word of God. You will launch in worship that God will surprise you even as you walk with him. I was just looking and trying to see. I'll rush because of time. I was just looking and trying to see what are some of the benefits of fishing in deep sea, in the natural, fishing in deep sea. And this is one thing I was able to find, that when you go to the deep sea to do your fishing there, you catch great and different catches. Great and different catches. 
When you go to buy fish in Gikomba, they come in sizes. There is size 2, size 3, size 4, size 5, and up to size 7. Now, if you're just at the shallow waters, you will catch omena. That is what you will catch. That is the biggest that you can catch. But if you want to catch a size 7, a size 8, and when I'm talking about a size 7, size 8, that's a fish that is this size. Tilapia. You cannot get that at the shores of the lake. Bwana sifiwe. You can never get that at the shores of the lake. So there are benefits of being able to get into deep waters. You'll be able to catch great and different sizes. When you look at the fish that comes from a water pond, it is normally very small and even the color can show you and it is tasteless. It is tasteless. Those of us who come from the lake region can never buy fish from a pond. We look at it, you are passing around Naivasha and you see them holding some fish along the side of whatever. Let me tell you, anybody who comes from those sides of Kisumu will never stop a vehicle to buy that fish. Pengine wala watanunua ne wala wametoka huku huku. Because you don't know the difference with it. It has many tiny bones. It is tasteless, you know. Why? Because it has been grown in shallow waters. Same to us in this year. You want to catch greatly in terms of spiritual things, then you will need to take the risk with the Lord and get into deep waters prayerfully. Deep waters will demand that you do not only wait until DCIK has announced a prayer and fasting for 40 days. It will mean that you will have a schedule for yourself. And tell yourself, I cannot eat for an entire week. I must have at least a day of prayer and fasting. I must have at least a time where I'm setting it aside so that I can meet with my Lord. Why? Because great things for us in this year will only be found in deep waters. That is the only place. When you read the Bible in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, you can read it at your own time. Chapter 47 from verse 1 up to around verse 11, it talks about the heights at which the prophet was taken from one height to another. And when you get to the last height that he got, he said he could no longer walk now. He was just swimming because it was the deep sea. And right there, he says, there was healing. One has a few there was healing. When he get, got to the depths, there was healing. When you read at your own time, you'll discover that there was fish now in that water. And I was looking at it and wondering which was this water body that was being shown to him. It was the Dead Sea that is usually very salty. That cannot contain any creatures at all. But he was being shown that if he allows the water that was coming from the sanctuary to keep moving inside this Dead Sea, it was going to be purified until there would be living creatures therein. If you will allow your marriage that looks like the Dead Sea, you'll allow your children that look like the Dead Sea, you'll allow your workplace that looks like the Dead Sea, you'll allow the water of the Lord, you move with it until you're swimming right inside of it, then your marriage will no longer be salty. Your workplace will no longer be salty. Why? Because God will be able to give it life. Number two, benefit of being able to fish in deep seas is that it gives you new challenge. With new and different fish comes additional challenges. Where before you could do the same old thing and come away with a catch, now you are experiencing new, um, new ways, yeah? New ways of doing things. And you start realizing 
when you are in deep sea, you start realizing that there are other creatures that you find right in deep sea that cannot be found anywhere else. A few years ago, I think it's two years, we went to the coast and those who were brave enough and they went into deep sea with a boat, they were able to see a spider. You know, all along, we have been taught in science and I think social studies that a spider has how many legs? Eight legs. But those people who went out, part of us, the pastor, we discovered there is a spider with five legs. If they were just staying at the shores, they would not have seen a spider with five legs. And they would have been left with the imagination that they carried from primary school that all spiders have eight legs. And that is the same thing that happens with our spiritual lives. When we stay at the show, you start imagining God always works just in one method, in one way, in one traditional way. But when you decide to go into deep sea, you start getting new challenges where the supernatural becomes natural for you. And so it's a call for us to launch into the deep. Into the deep water still naturally. There are different, the atmosphere is different. You start experiencing a different atmosphere. Most of us experience normal low wave water fishing when you're fishing around the shore. However, once you step your game into deeper waters, the atmosphere changes. That is naturally. The experience of that person who is fishing at the shore and the experience of that other person who is fishing at deep waters is different. In deep waters, the atmospheres have changed. It has changed. You start experiencing God in a new dimension. It is where he is able to call you my son, my daughter. It is where now he begins to reveal to you the deep secrets that you have always wanted to know about your family. It's where now he starts releasing to you the secrets of the nation that you need to know so that you can pray effectively. Whereas the rest are just praying haphazardly without knowing what exactly to hit. Because you have gone into the deep water with the Lord, he will be able to reveal to you the deep, deep secrets that he only reveals to those who are intimate to him. As I wind up, he comes to a point in the life of Abraham and he is saying, how can I do this without informing my friend Abraham? Why did Abraham become his friend? Because Abraham was willing to go all the way with him. Abraham walked on deep waters where he was told, leave the land and go to the place I will show you. He trusted a hundred percent. He trusted him a hundred percent. And so God is saying, I cannot do anything without letting Abraham into my secret. Oh, how I pray that God will be able to say, I cannot do anything anything without informing Millicent, my friend. How I pray that God will be able to say, I cannot do anything without informing James, without informing Jane, without informing Wythera, my friend. But for him to be able to say that, you must be willing to launch into the deep. Move away from the things that you are used to. You know, Move away from the comfort zone until you're saying, Lord, it is me and you. I am not settling for anything ordinary here. I know it has been said in my place that people can only go up to this level, but I'm not settling for anything ordinary in this place. I know that it has been very difficult. I know that education-wise, I've only reached in this level, but Lord, I am not settling up for anything ordinary. I want more of you. More of you. So that when the great, when people will be testifying of the great catch, you'll be among those who will be testifying. But you must be willing to get to the great catch. In conclusion, your depth, the deeper you will go, or your depth will determine 
your height. Your depth will determine your height. In 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 30. 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 30. The Bible says, And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Hallelujah. As you go deeper, you will be bearing fruit upwards. There is no alternative. If you want to go to higher heights in this year, then the first thing you'll need to do is to go deeper in your word study, deeper in your prayer life, deeper in your worship life, deeper in intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ, then you will bear fruits. Only then you will bear fruits. Otherwise, by the time people will be giving a testimony of the great catch, Hallelujah. Or by the time people will be giving their testimonies of the big fish that they have caught, Oh, how I pray that nobody is going to catch omena in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How I pray that in DCIK, we will get the big fish. Why? Because at his word, we will launch. And you know, Peter was able to say, at your word, because he stayed there and he heard Jesus teach until he was already convicted. So he says, we have worked, we have toiled, but at your word, you will only be able to say, at your word, because you will have read that word. If you don't read it, you won't have anything that you will tell the Lord at your word. At your word, because you will have walked in here on a Sunday and heard the servants of God preach. At your word, because you will have moved into this place on Wednesday and heard them preach and gone back now until you knew that this word is able to work. At your word, Jesus, I will launch into the deep. I don't know how many people will want to launch this year into the deep. If you're that kind of a person, and you're telling God, I'm launching deeper in my marriage. I'm launching deeper in my parenting. I'm launching deeper at my workplace. I'm launching deeper in my career. Then you'd be upstanding as we pray. I am launching deeper at your word. At your word, Jesus. And just open your mouth and tell him, Lord, I am launching deeper. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Just lift your voice and tell him, I don't know where you're launching deeper. I only know where I am launching deeper. I don't know about you, but I know where I am launching deeper. I know that which I want. I know that where I have toiled and gotten nothing because I used my own experience. At your word, I am launching deeper. In the ministry, I am launching deeper. Yes, in everything that concerns me, I am launching deeper. Lord, we want to launch deeper. At your word, you've told us to, ca to cast our nets, oh God, into the deep waters. We are willing, God, to take risk with you. We are willing, Jehovah, because we know that you are in the boat with us, our Father. We are launching deeper today. We are launching deeper, Jehovah God. We are launching deeper with you in the name of Jesus. And we know that we are going to catch big in the name of Jesus. We are going to experience the great catch, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Just at your word, our Father. Help us to move from the shallow waters. Help us, Lord, to move from the beaches, oh God, that we may get into deep sea, our Father, where we can experience the supernatural, oh God, where we can experience new challenges uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you and we worship you, God, because you are great, because you are mighty. In Jesus' name, do we pray? Amen and amen. Amen.